today, the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education and SEF, the Tertiary Education Commission, will explain the new side of the story for the dissolvement of the university court and SEF, setting up of a special committee for run and uh, perform the function of the university courts. People and we don't they follow um, Ready Democracy program them. We're going to see we don't they host different players them for sake of this issue. We happen between we they happen between the University of Saloon and the Minister of uh, Technical and Higher Education. And yesterday edition of the program Good Morning Saloon, we be get uh, civil society rep na the program and self we been get as a president we state them position. But today we they get the ministry we take the decision and also them partner the winner. Uh, Tertiary Education Commission for can explain to Salon people as to why they dissolve the university court. Well, the Minister of uh, Technical and uh, Higher Education, now one way they be done separate from the uh, Ministry of Basic Education under present bill in government, and the role of this this now for ensure that they should pretend the running of uh, higher institutions then a uh, Salon and ensure a sure quality in uh, the higher education sector. For Sika that I want to welcome to the program Manuel J. Momo, in the Director of Higher Education, Minister of Technical and Higher Education. Once again, good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good, good morning. And also, Ali Abidon, welcome Josephus Sawyer, Executive Secretary, Tertiary Education Commission. Where this agency, the established by an act of parliament in 2001, for among other things, them accredit higher institutions and show quality. Uh, and the higher education sector and also advised government on thing them we get for do with higher education justice force now the representative for the tertiary education commission at the program good morning welcome to the program good morning salon good morning once again yes i come to emmanuel jimomo uh from the minister of technical and higher education and director of higher education minister of technical and higher education we the inside the program for explain the ministry of education the your side as to why then dissolve the university court and set up a body for run the a special committee for do the work of the committee. From that background, we are doing Guy and Yusef, of course, don't they follow 98 discussions then <coughs> on this issue? Then are the program for talk about on your own side. First of all, for listeners, then one for what are the latest for sake of this issue? We are just give background to. All right, um, thank you very much for. Um extending invitation to the Ministry of Technical Higher Education for make people can make the position clear here. Um, based on waiting yesterday, um, the as a resident and also the school society person we can talk. Well we really don't really as a ministry don't say we have resolved this matter. Not a team who can begin the game from media publication. But when we listen then thing and yesterday we actually realized that um, a lot of misinformation went out there yesterday to the public. And then management demand necessary say we need to come and also make our position clear and also bring the, 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 the to light the truth, which is why I am here and I thank you very much for extending that invitation to us. The university court actually um, um, is a creation of an act. Uh, if you take a look at the Universities Act um, of um, Universities Act of 2021, you will find out say um, section 11 of that university act created the university court. The university court, um, the highest administrative decision-making body in the university, right? So we expect that um, because Nadina, the highest administrative decision-making body, chaired by the chancellor of the university, therefore actually uh, performed a duty um, with the aim of um, attaining the objective of the university. But over the years, actually, um, as I talk to you, me and I be a member with a seat in court in the stead of the chief education um, officer. So, a lot of things and they really will be the go, will not be the go well at the university court. And we finally say this, if it continue for go on, it is actually, um, you know, they do no good to the university. So as a supervising ministry, we demand necessary say we have to come in and take the action necessary. In the first place, you know, we, we don't actually they get constant meeting with the universities. So to start with, um, the university 
of Sierra Leone presented their academic calendar of events to us, as all other institutions have public institutions. We want to actually go back to the um, normal academic calendar. That academic calendar, which was presented to us, let me tell we say, then go we'll get congregation. Well, for people with the listening at graduation, like called a graduation, for the one that will be done, done them programs in June last year, 2023, June, July last year, 2023. They say they will get a graduation day in December, 2023. To so be specific, 17th, 18th, and 19th of December, 2023. That was the academic calendar presented to us. Now we go to court. When we go to court, then tell we again say, well, because I am pending strike day for ASA, then I will meet up that academic calendar. I sat in that court. I tell them say, well, now this court, now you don't take this decision. ASA strike not for serve as an impediment actually for me could not get forget this congregation as stipulated. More especially when we don't reach in the, um, an agreement with ASA that government is committed um, to fulfilling its obligation with the demands we they make. So why can't we have this congregation if you cannot have it in December? Why we not go get them in January? I appeal to the court. They say, no, we get them in January. They say, no, our decision, either we have it in December or in April. Those are the two dates where they don't, where they don't agree. And they say, the decision is sacrosanct. I appeal to them. I said, this one is not going down well with the students where they wait for graduates. It will not go down well with the parents and it will not go down well with other state actors. So please see reason. If you cannot have it in December, let's have this congregation in January. They say no, they're not the one. You have a baby university, EBK University. We be don't go get your congregation. Recently we don't come. Last week we come Jala. Jala don't get the congregation. It's a technical university. Then they work on the congregation. So. We see, I say, really, this one is not good. People then go for look for job. People then go for apply for 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 other um, studies. And when you they come for interview, of course, I mean, I, 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 I most times I came at the panel for interview for 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 international scholarship. You go for actually present your calendar, your 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 original certificate of result before you are considered for that result. Look at what happens at EBK. As in they graduate and they give them the result. When is when when will the university actually give original certificate, original copies of results to the student with the grade? So we say I say this is not actually good for the image of the university. We have to step in. Another thing, the fees, the other charges, the levy other charges, which will not go through the university court. And the student they come with a complaint to the ministry. So we come, we sit down, we discuss the administration for the ensure say. Then take this one to the F and GPC, that is Finance and General Purpose Committee, for them to look at them, and also send them to court for approval before ever they go actually level on student. We only saw that at the WhatsApp. We were shocked. You see? Another thing where the university court been do is that you see the blatant violation of the university's act. The university act with a talk in the talk say in section seven, subsection two, paragraph and um, subsection three, sorry. Section 7, subsection 3 of the University Act, it talks say, in the absence of a chancellor, the vice chancellor can act in the stead of a chancellor. Again, I was in that court. You know, the reason why Ministry of Technical Higher Education is rep representing at all courts of the universities now for give advice on policy implementation. Seems similarly with the TEC. So I advise them, there is an express provision that in the absence of the chancellor, the vice chancellor will have to step in. They say no. In fact, we are going to, we, we appoint somebody, we're not to chancellor for making it go be deputy chairman of court. I told them that's wrong. You, you, you have an express provision. You cannot do that. So we, you find out say, the ministry can go to them, to them court say they, we they advise them, but they they listen. They want to always have, do things their own you, way. You don't say plenty. You, you, you don't say you, you don't say plenty things, but we will just uh, for make you lay your premise. With all what you don't explain, waiting lay the foundation for the dissolvement of the court immediately. Waiting the immediate 
issues them will lead to the dissolvement of well, the Well, now, now, now the foundation are the so. Now because of that thing they are so, you see the lapses in the court. You see the lapses. Then thing they are so, why they, why they explain so? Now then actually lead we for make people can't dissolve that court today. Because the final said they are not working in the interest of the university, in the interest of the student. And people then, people then, anything goes wrong, now the ministry that they can fall on. Now we did the acts. Because now we they actually regulate, now we they supervise all public universities in this country. And if we actually look at the educational objective of the government, which is enshrined in section 9, subsection 1 of the Constitution of Sierra Leone, 1991, and they tell you, say, government is the responsibility of government for making you provide adequate educational opportunities for all citizens of this country. And if you are providing that, we are the agent. All right. So if, you are, if they are not doing it well, then the Ministry of Technical Higher Education will be held responsible. Now we, now we government will fall apart. All right. You, you, you mentioned, say, um, the Act provide um, um, provision we are in. You, you know, the Vice Chancellor can act if the, the, the Chancellor not do. Which are the criteria? We um, vice chancellor forget for act in that position. Day. Well, the, the law say once you don't be vice chancellor, now you for act with the with the chancellor not day. Yeah, you for them, you for of course you know say for be a chance a vice chancellor you know a professor of the university and that kind of thing as you in the act. You understand? So they say no, the vice chancellor not to we know we know we know they even allow for, not to in for act they appointed somebody else. And that person, I be sit down at, at, at the university court, it they move motions. So, like me, I just tell myself, say, just as the appointment was not statutory, then the motions then, where it be the move, was also equally illegal. But according to your explanation, <laughs> of that um, in the past years, then, when mm. we, the, 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 the the acting vice chancellor, not the, the vacancy would be filled by the pro chancellor. All right. And so these are the same thing happen in this case. But the ministry go ahead and say no to the person way for acting this capacity when a professor Samai. All right. So that that brings me to another thing. You see, um, when the court was constituted five years back, they began for appoint committees of court. Now that committees of court where they be appointed, where they get for also appoint the deputy chairman of court, where I don't just talk about. So we are expecting that they could have equally appointed a pro vice chancellor as provided for by the Universities Act, Section 9, Subsection 1. That a pro vice chancellor should be appointed by court. So we will expect, say, they for not appoint a pro vice chancellor, which they never did. They don't ever do that. Name. So what thing happen? We go to court at some point in time where after the appointment of Professor Fudisa by His Excellency to another position. So we now ask, the minister was concerned that the vacuum has, was created. He asked, do we have a pro vice chancellor? When I for step in immediately after Professor Sadon left, the, 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 the chancellor actually say no. No pro vice chancellor. That was a terrible conversation between the minister and the the the, the chancellor. Is this official which conversation reported, or just private which conversation? Which private conversation? Which she reported to us. The minister reported that to us. So now we also go on a meeting. We ask the the the, 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 the registrar. If we find the phone, say the registrar. Now, in the custodian of the steel of the university, the statute and other and ordinances of the university. So the registrar will ask, do you have a pro vice chancellor? He said, well, by understanding, they get a pro vice chancellor. What did that mean? Say so that we don't get an understanding amount, say, themselves, say, therefore it will be rotational. Okay? Granted, okay, by understanding. But we me I talk, we tell myself, say, you don't run an institution by understanding when there is an express provision as i stated in section 9 subsection 1 of the universities act of 2021 so you it is clear so that the pro vice chancellor should be appointed so we are of the view that the pro vice chancellor was appointed but she was he was never appointed and we asked the registrar okay let's grant it for argument's sake if the pro vice chancellor was appointed do you have minutes to that effect as i speak to you the registrar no ever produced minute where that decision was taken, the minute of that meeting, and the university access minutes of meetings of court. 
should always be, I mean, in the, in the possession of the, of the registrar, as she is the custodian of those documents. But according Produce to... Produce those documents to her. She never did. So we said, there is no pro vice chancellor. And it was on that reason, in fact, the minister went back to the chancellor and said, now there is no pro vice chancellor, I have to take a decision as a ministry supervising this decision to appoint the acting, acting uh, um, VC and P. But, Which but, she did. But you understand? The, and in fact, the act But according say, to the president for ASA yesterday, he say the ministry or the minister not go and ask the, 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 the admin on, on, on the university. Well, I... say when I just act on my own. Well, I, I actually listen. I actually listen that uh, um, as a president. And yes, the guy don't say. He says so yesterday. Which is not true. So, so like, any so tangible like, document so like, where they should I mean, say the, 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 the admin or the university actually you know me tell and say a b and c as you just mentioned yeah the registrar the registrar say now by understanding the minutes of the court they tell me that they say that by understanding that it has it was rotational it's there you understand so they say i say in fact now the minister now in go now he call the chancellor now in ask them say what do we do in this circumstance so but you went for no say the Universities Act of 2021 makes provision in Section 7, subsection 2, D, that in the absence that, um, that um, in a situation like that, where a vacuum is created, it is the responsibility of the Chancellor for making go get consultation with the Minister for the furtherance of the objective of the court. So we are expecting that the Chancellor would have consulted the Minister. Instead of consulting the minister, it was the other way around. Now the now, minister now even go to the chancellor. Now, so now, you see? now, where the minister don't inquire if pro chancellor the for take the place of the acting uh, the vice chancellor. What thing the ministry do in this case is it to appoint or ask the university for appoint pro chancellor or vice acting vice chancellor for the university or now the ministry get the right for appoint which legal basis will I use for appoints uh, acting vice chancellor well i don't tell you say i don't tell you say the 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 now the 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 minister actually get consultation with the chancellor he say vice uh, chan, uh, vice chancellor not they now are they take action for appoint the vice chancellor so Let's, 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 let, let me see. Which this. legal basis let, let me, let me the this. minister used for justify that appointment? Let me see Somebody this. will say if the vice chancellor no day, mm -hmm. the minister can go back and ask the university court for appoint, but instead of in do appointment. So in doing the appointment, make people they ask on which legal basis? All right. So now, you see the argument of the university, they always focus on the university's act. But people for also understand that the University Act gets documents where big pass the Act. <laughs> you understand? Whose document that? The Constitution of Sierra Leone. When I had the parents' document, it big pass the Act. Yeah? That is the ground law. So, if, you look, if you look at section, section 62 of the Constitution of Sierra Leone of 1991, and they tell you, say, where any minister has been charged with the responsibility for any department of government, he shall exercise general direction and control. General direction and control over that department. So that includes so, appointing of acting vice chancellor. Now we, now we and the supervise. Now we the supervise the ministry of technical. Uh, sorry, the the universities of this country. So that is to say, the minister get right. If you don't see say things are not working well, he get the responsibility for making go step in the ministry. We cannot just Some, sit by so, and say no. Somebody go say the minister for uh, 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 for ensure say he, he, he use all the avenues them if he not it is not a work if he don't ask the, the the university court for appoint chancellor and pro chancellor then no will appoint at all he go go use in power now for appoint no, no, but no. just asking if this day no then he do the action <laughs> no no we not we not actually will go for acts we believe say the university the university actually. Don't the University of Sierra a big university? You don't take you don't have all the one than the oldest university in this country. If I don't actually know, say not to wait for third university waiting for do the minister been say if we get pro vice chancellor appointed by court, there was no business of the ministry appointing the acting vice chancellor. No business, we don't have any business, but because they reneged on their duty on their responsibility, that I make we come in 
And if they talk, say, we'll not get any legal basis. The ministry get legal basis. Why don't they say the constitution is bigger than the university act? Where is section 62, which the minister use? You talk, say, we get, um, that we can supervise, we get general control over the department and subject to such direction and control. The department shall be under the supervision of the permanent secretary, of the permanent secretary whose office shall be the public, of which was the reason why the permanent secretary write that letter day for dissolve that court. So in section 62, also clear. You see, in the university, don't just, don't just focus your, if you are a researcher, we expect a people in university for research. You don't just limit your thought around the university's act. Go look at other statutes. The TC Act is there. The university act is there. The constitution, which is the parent document, is there. All look right. at them. And look at all of those provisions. Before everybody they can begin to talk, say, the minister not get any legal basis for doing what he will do. All right. You, you just mentioned about legal basis. Um, on the other hand, the... the, 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 the um, academic staff association say the minister and no get rights. And within them base the arguments now that how president will appoint the minister, don't the minister said they appoint somebody. Now <laughs> also uh, this, this is interesting. If you take a look at even the appointment of the vice chancellor and principal, the substantive holder, this is not acting no more, the substantive holder. Would they actually appoint there are provisions in the universities at section eight one and three, they tell me how they appoint the substantive order of that position. That after the search committee, the joint search committee of the commission and a TEC and the court, they therefore actually present the, the, the names of people to the minister. And their recommendation, and the, and the minister therefore recommend this person to chancellor for make them appoint her as vice chancellor and principal. The same thing goes for the, for the chancellor that the minister. That the president shall appoint a chancellor on the advice of the minister. So that minister, even the chancellor today, the president will for appoint chancellor, or tomorrow president will for appoint chancellor of that university, as it is in the universities act. Now minister got for forward names to president, recommending them. Before I have a president will say, okay, I'll appoint uh, continue, I'll appoint continue for stay with me inside the uh, program, uh, <laughs> director of higher education and minister of technical and higher education. Uh, we they come back to you. Uh, we they go for a short break inside the program. Good morning, Salon, and continue the program after that. All time network problem. Salon, they come to you from 98.1 FM. If you just the January, um, we they talk to the Minister of Technical and Higher Education and also the Tertiary Education Commission. And we still guest them like Manuel uh, J. Momo Esquire, Director of Higher Education, Minister of Technical and Higher Education. And also inside the program, we get Joseph Osoya. Then they explain the young side of the story why the dissolution of the university court and setting up of a special committee. As um, Emmanuel Jimomo the explain, say that the constitution the minister used for dissolve the university courts, we according to Ram, then no, the, the, the university courts think say the or the education ministry thinks say the constitution big pass the university court and decide for use and for dissolve the university courts. Well, we come to Joseph Osoya. Uh, Executive Secretary, Tertiary Education Commission, as I mentioned earlier, this is an institution with an established by an act of parliament in 2001 for, among other things, them accredit higher institutions, them ensure quality uh, higher education and advise government on things that we get for with higher education. Good morning, uh, Mr. Joseph Fossen. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Salon. Good morning. It don't be quiet for a long time. They uh, watch Mr. Momo, they make your premise. From the TEC standpoint, what's uh, the justification on the dissolution of the university courts? Well, um, of course, the TEC not get the mandate for dissolved courts. Let's establish that premise in the first place. Right? Um, but the TEC key advice, as you rightly don't see, from part three, um, section seven one of the Act, we lay the premise itself for the establishment of the Tertiary Education Commission and some of its functions. And it, it makes a very clear say the object for which the commission is established, to so among other things, is to advise government on tertiary education. Um, that's exactly what we do as a commission. Um, we advise can always be considered by government and take them, or if you so desire not for take them, based upon whatever premise we base them on. So um, this particular matter is the um, TEC, also last it and say now a member of the university courts. Um, and one for delving into what in the director already done talking as to we reach to that particular point the, for the minist ministry appoint an acting vice chancellor and principal. But what in the TCK state, when that dis discussion been going on the university court, 
right? And even the TCB make it very clear together with the legal people in CM. One way thing no be ever happened was that no consultation had been come directly from the university court to the ministry. And the first meeting we've been getting in December on this particular issue, there was a resolution that um, the Chancellor forgets a meeting, a further consultation where he would decide as to who that for meet the ministry. Right, um, by all indication, um, that meeting is like there was already a posture of the courts where we make it very clear that um, this position of the ministry will not accept them in any shape or form. Right, and that within the court stay, the court supreme and the court in position sacrosanct. And even that meeting, the DTC was very clear, even in terms of the sensitivity of the position of the vice chancellor and principal for saying you cannot abandon that position or left that position for a whole year, considering the sensitive nature of the position. Had it been for the TEC at that particular time, the, the substantive vice chancellor and principal will for just don't say make a resign and move on, considering that he was not physically incapacitated, right? But he did go for taking another appointment. And the university, very strategic, we talk about the, the vice chancellor and principal, we can step in as deputy chair of court, we can head senate, and get so many other issues. So, fast forward 2024, um, it came very clearly that. Um, the meeting, consultation with the minister, the court had a posture. And then, of course, subsequent meeting in day, in which the court make the position very clear that um, then get the rights. And the ministry did not prove them to the best of their ability that, indeed, there was no minute for justify this appointment of court of a poor vice chancellor. And what he make um, the TEC self convinced with the position of the ministry was the fact that in a meeting held on the 16th of January this year, Right, the court again go back now and say then they can appoint a pro, a pro vice chancellor. We automatically presuppose that yeah. when the ministry be confronted with at the initial stage, say court not be ever appointed pro vice chancellor was okay. So meaning at that initial point, that be the position of the court for say yes at this initial stage you not get a pro vice chancellor appointed by court, but let the ministry give you an opportunity for point one, and I don't feel so before they even reach to this particular point. But when you vehemently Right, you vehement and categorically they take a push to say no, we have an internal arrangement, we have a pro vice chancellor. You don't get any evidence for substantiate that to your superior authorities, the young and uh, uh, supervisory authorities. But all implication is like as if to say you they you they you they assert authority where you never justify. No. So uh, just a minute, they cannot lose this point. Because um waiting for being come very clear at the initial point was for the university to say yes. We will not be appointed pro chancellor. The courts not be appointed, them, but we ask the ministry for give you an opportunity now for go to court and have that regularize, which was not done. But it was in so many minutes to the effect where the university would justify say there was a pro vice chancellor on an internal arrangement basis, and there was no submission to the ministry for say give you an opportunity for law appointed pro vice chancellor. After which, then take that posture. Day, we were invited by the highest lawmaking body in this country, in a parliament, right? For which the TC was also part of that meeting. At that meeting, both the university, the ministry, and make them positions them very clear. Parliament are the custodian of the making of laws. There's a parliamentary oversight committee on higher education, right? I just set the premise under which the TC come into this, not to look at the TC just cap and take a decision. That meeting, the parliament on the... Um, 16th of January 2024, Parliament make a clear position where they say, after all of the deliberations, they say they will come communicate the outcome of the discussion, and which they did on the 18th in a resolution, a six point resolution, where they make very clearly on a clear roadmap for set to whatever impasse. Now, 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 quick one, quick clarification. The TEC therefore advised government on issue of higher education. Absolutely. Now, when I work with the Minister of Education, what and the institutions, in the institutions, them, what thing would advise the Minister of Education when they said in the on the dissolution of the the, 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 the university courts? What thing I would advise? Yes, I can't do that. That's not the premise that they Because I mean, for let you just advice, you get for based you advice on certain premise. I don't tell you say we're gonna court. And it was evidently clear at the court meeting that there was no um, proof of evidence for justify C. There was an appointed pro vice chancellor by the court, right? And the expectation of TC at that particular point was for the court to see can the ministry give us the time to go back to the drawing board and have this position? 
But the posture was very clear on the part of the university court to say, and then a record where the TC representative will make them very clear say, TC not going to be a party of this particular discussion, right? It didn't have the meeting, I mean, it didn't have the minutes. So when we come to the, uni, um, to the parliamentary oversight committee now, right? Take and say the university court not listen to waiting TC advice, right? We come to the parliamentary oversight committee on tertiary and higher education. We call all parties present. Hmm? Then they discuss the minister making premise, the university ch and chancellor making premise. Parliament look at us and say, now we make the laws here. I think the road where the ministry don't go, right, we they come up with a clear roadmap. And there was a six-point resolution, among which one, resolution one, they uphold, parliament uphold the decision of the ministry. Parliament coming with a six-month roadmap for, say, the acting vice chancellor appointed by the ministry for stay for six months, for which period a substantive vice chancellor to a such an appointments committee for be constituted and all of the ramifications shall be done. We we'll get a copy of that one day. We we'll get a copy of that resolution. We are a member of the university court. Of course, we are a member of the university court. Then una, 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 um, recommend for the dissolve the court to be part of. Is that the case? Yeah, we, we get a regulatory mandate. If you, if you day as a member of a court does not in any way jeopardize your functions because you they provide a regulatory and supervisory and, role and, and, of the of the universities. And let, me, let, let me make that very clearly. And that's I think some people in misconstrue now because I hear some man on talk say, oh, if the TC get let make a, let me make a the, the TC even gets a power under a regulation for close a university. Let me make that very clear. So you can't say because it is the Sitna court does not you know, get a mandate because there are other speakers that the TC. Because the argument that, 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 that you yeah. are you TC the part of the problem and now na the church again. No, no being case. a member of the court does not make you a problem. You can get a dissenting view to what people they see, right? And as part of regulatory functions, I don't tell you already. See, if we get powers up to the extent for suspend for revoke accreditation, we get also power for advise government, right? He left to government for say, waiting the TC advice, yes, we could take him or not. As I don't tell you, see, take TC out of the equation now, right? Take TC out of the equation. It goes beyond TC now. It goes to the Parliamentary Oversight Committee with a six-point resolution. Hmm? Upholding, right, the decision of the ministry, coming a way forward with, waiting, a such an appointments committee, okay. having respected... The, uh, the acting and, um, vice chancellor and principal for day day for six months, right? So if they don't come with Dande now, then the last point where they make say anybody will bridge Dande will be a total content of parliament. You get me? After that, they waiting happy. They cut someone another meeting. And another meeting, they now when they go the 24th, then take a decision say, no, the previous meeting where the court don't agree on in retroactive for appoint a pro vice chancellor that they stand on that decision and they uphold that decision and that they know they recognize the decision of the ministry so meaning you don't breach the authority of the ministry you don't breach the authority and recommendation of tc in the courts you don't breach the parliamentary oversight committee of higher and technical education so all of them problems are communicate culminated then the tc say okay then we need to make a position right. to the ministry of technical and higher education on the basis of that, on the basis of that, then the TC recommend sanction to the courts. Sanction can be anyway. So you think say the, the, the decision where the ministry take for scatter the courts not the best action from the TC angle? Absolutely. The TC definitely will say when you get a university court, we don't violate the authority of the ministry. You don't take the ministry out of it. You go to the lawmaking body, we are the legislature, we are the highest body making, we are parliament. Then set the resolution, you blatantly violate and you contempt parliament, right? Then you come to the advice of the TEC, you go against them. Then, of course, the sanction, right? TEC not explicitly say close the, uh, uh, um, um, dissolve the court, but the sanction when the ministry look at the magnitude of the crime and say, yes, of course, the TEC definitely support. The decision of the ministry right. on that basis. All right. One thing again with the president of ASA say yesterday now that nothing so far not in the university act we mention acting vice chancellor. So the decision again with the ministry take from the TC angle. Una un, un, unaware of any provision of the act we see the ministry supposed for appoint 
acting vice chancellor um the director already don't tell you say it, it don't it don't go to the governor under the constitution and i, I just want to give you um series of precedents right um even the the, the, the substantive vice chancellor they talk about now was appointed by the ministry if i think the president of us have been something not be even talk that one so now the right post the substantive the i'm coming sir, i'm coming i'm coming right you're talking about precedents right they talk about rotational they talk about understanding the precedent was the substantive vice chancellor was appointed by the ministry the dvc in question was also appointed by the ministry at that particular time they, there was no answer for coming and talk say what did the ministry be doing not being correct you understand what I'm saying? At least now, now they use the act at your advantage. Then when you come at your disadvantage, you want for talk say no. When Professor Malamu, hmm, they come back to statistics Sigalun, when he left uh, um, Jala University, a whole retired vice chancellor and principal was placed as acting. And until a sub, it's a quick fix, right? It's a quick fix. It's a six month transition period, for which for lady uh, um, uh, um, Activities of the university not stall. I think, but if the powers of the supervising ministry, because mind you, anything will go clash now at that level day, when they go to cabinet, that the minister. Mm -hmm. we'll now, now, just the question, you just mentioned saying that president, that that's only happened over the past year. Now, so the law say? The law states, it, I, I, the law make a very clear, you see, right? Um, when you don't get a vice chancellor and principal, you forget to prove vice chancellor and principal, right? Waiting a situation where a pro vice chancellor and principal not there and a movement day, and then the university they insist for deceive the supervisory authority for talk so we have one. Then the, um, the, the, the supervisory authority will get for go beyond uh -huh. and take a decision, a radical decision for ensure say una, irregularize una, things. We now continue for the with where they come or oh, come back. We continue for look at this issue of dissolution of the university courts and setting up of uh, the special committee we. Uh, don't come up uh, with the new recommendations. Then we discuss that recommendation inside the program. We'll go for a short break. We'll continue the program. Good morning, Saloon. We're the Democracy 98.1 FM inside the program. We um, they take other issues inside the program. Usai, this being term, the Eastern Lions executive may announce the development plan for the trade center field where this, according to the chairman for the Eastern Lions football club. Anthony Navo Jr. inside the next three weeks, then go fix the artificial turf at the Trade Center as well for improve the playing facility for host the Eastern Lions Premier League game them. Well, Musakama get more and gonna report. Presently they na the trade center, we are the playing ground for the Eastern Lions football club. But as the club been do announce say they want to upgrade this field by the way they will put um, artificial turf as the first phase of them three-way projects where later they will build pavilion and other facilities them that after the first round of the Saloon Premier League work don't start na the ground now as we the na the Easter Lions playing field now we say a day I see truck park and uh, also see machine when a caterpillar and I see red dotty all over the place from me far end by the goalpost I see Consignment them before I talk to the chairman of the club. I will talk to the engineer in charge of the construction projects na trade center. Now we go introduce himself. Me na engineer Kef Kamara. We work with a gentle group of companies, CLO Limited. We did trade center. We try for prepare the surface for the artificial turf. This project we don't begin on since last year. As we all know, people were familiar with Trade Center before, how they be rocky with the help of we boss. Send we as a team with the machine them. We can remove all the rocks them within the day. We try for smooth day. So so now at the second phase we day on, we they prepare the surface for the artificial turf. As you see now, if you can last week you will see say na sandos within the pitch now we don't come with laterite we don't spread down compact them we will prepare the surface final one where we will prepare for the turf when the chairman for east alliance been say this project they complete in the next two to three weeks people deny or people get um, mixed feeling whether or not it would be a very guaranteed work for put artificial turf in two to three weeks. As an engineer, how possible that could be? It's possible because Mr. Navo, when I the chairman of Easter Lions, the household name, I don't know more than Sabiam, 
Where they know the close to him can doubt with you, they say, I guarantee, I give me word, say, as long as he be done, say, this stuff will complete within two to three weeks with the on arm and with the push. As you see now, the machines then they are now and they slip to the back. For the past three days, now the water bouncer, the grader and the compactor then they are. So with the push. Okay, as you don't get from Engineer Kef, we then they do the first phase of the uh, Artificial tough project now the trade center. I'm here to the chairman for East Lions Football Club, Wina Antonio Nabu Jr. Hello and welcome to Democracy Radio. Thank you very much, Musa. Um, some time back or two weeks back, I've been getting you online. We you did talk about this project. Say, as soon as the first round of the Salon Premier League end, we they start. And today, we then at the field now. We say um, the engineer don't explain the process way they don't undergo so far. What's next after this project? After this phase here, so we did they do so. Thank you very much. So um, the entire period of this work now between two to three weeks, like I've been mentioned. So you get two sets of contractors. You get the civil engineers, then we in a gentle group, uh, the, the, the lead engineer you just talked to. We now then carry them big, big machine here for prepare the ground, work on the drainage, divert the water, and do all the half half work. We then done, because we don't depart for a couple of days now, then they carry dirty, trucks them, and, and prepare the, the ground. We then done, then they hand over to the Chinese, we now the company where we order the tough from. Then they are, now they don't they work all them this year, then they direct the civil engineers them how for, you know, prepare the ground, who's for high, who's for low. And we then don't, then they hand over the field to the Chinese man, then now, where they can pred the turf, where they're at the final stage, where they can to the artificial turf. It's possible for do all them work here in two to three weeks before the second round of the Salon Premier League? So we got that work them, don't get, not get me wrong, where they continue. That is the, the work for pavilions, the work for the perimeter fence, the work for the floodlights, and all the other adjustments around the field. Then they get for the go on. But it's very urgent for we forget the artificial turf done so that we team go come back for play for the, se- the second round. For the second round, this feel good already for play. Uh, somebody they listen go like for no, how much this cost is the Lions? I no one for give specific figure, but obviously the artificial turf is about $150,000. The ready made pavilion we want for install. It's about two hundred and something thousand dollars. You put that there and put so many other artwork where they go. It's over five hundred thousand dollars for a start. This but re- you get for spend more than that as you go. This ready made at the, um, uh, pavilion now uh, before the second round starts. Well, no, it's not possible for let you fix the pavilion before the second round starts. But in the next couple of months, it go already because we don't order them. In fact, we get a good friend, another colleague. Now this football industry we. Now, two arm um, we pass, we don't do one um, before for show we the road on how forget we own. So, thanks to Rambo, with that time they come, we, we go talk about that. But yes, um, getting the pavilion, you also get for get separate um, um, contractors that we get for flying because now something like prefab, you just they can't fix them. The civil engineers then from Gentle Group go prepare the foundation of the pavilion and then you will just can't fix them. But all that they deep and the different um, phases of the project. So fans, ready, we know only the Guna, um, a proper feel, but by the special grace of God, will they win the league or will they win the FA Cup? Chairman for East Lions Football Club, Anthony Nabu Jr., he did talk about them field projects, where they go on now, where according to them, they go complete them before the second round of the Saloon Premier League in the next two to three weeks. As you say, the civil engineers then from the gentle group of company, they work now on the field, and after that, they go hand over to the Chinese uh, company, we don't they in salon now we said they order the carpet grass from and then we we'll start to work as soon as the gentle group of company and over the field to them well from the trade center now the eastern parts now freeton for the society for radio democracy musa kamara naminim well the program is still listening to our good morning salon where they come to you from the society for radio democracy 98.1 fm and uh, still now the studio we get with studio guests them we get uh, 
the director of, of IA Education, uh, the Minister of IA and Technical Education. We the now the studio with we and also we get the executive secretary from the Tertiary Education Commission, the only the studio on the dissolution of the university court and appointment of special committee. But earlier, the director of higher education, now the minister of technical education, uh, Emmanuel J. Momo Esquire, say the the justification where the minister used for dissolve the university court and appoint uh, a special committee in reference to the constitution of saloon where they use uh, as against the university court we see the constitution there above the university court but of course we don't get different advocates then we don't take central position in discussion of this and yesterday we've been get one of them that is still doing the chief executive campaign for human rights and development international chadi abdul fatoma they're online now as he, they listen to the program and he get position on the statement and the um, issue with the director of higher education say now the constitution of saloon they use for dissolve the university court hello good morning fatoma welcome to the program good morning saloon good morning uh musa and good morning listeners i just uh give brief background uh and making reference to the the position of the Minister of Education, according to the Director of Higher Education, see now the Constitution of Saloon they use for dissolve the University Court and set up special committee. Now, one way you don't get interest in what's in your position on this? Um, I actually want to know the specific provision inside with National Constitution where the Ministry rely on this model, but since the time they enter into this conversation, they never make that constitutional provision as a sole vehicle for travel with for Lama a legal destination. But however, they have been onboarding in an illegal vehicle. First, this is not a very ministry, the minister say the TEC advised them under the TEC Act 7 you know, and Section 7, where na in, Section 72F, where na in give them the power for let them go ahead for dissolve. So he knew that, say, the, the, the education ministry, the higher education ministry, continue for the consistent in this matter, continue for the deliberately the lie and deceive the people of this country on a straightforward situation. The, 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 the institution clearly know, and the representation, they are clearly know that, say, an error has been done, a mistake has been done, what needs to be done, now let them first stop as a human being for actually accept this error and move ar along with the process. It, it knows that deliberately what they do, it is against the rule of law. When then they appoint back, then go to section 8, Five of the University Act will not get any bearing with regards to what they say. If you think about within section 60, 61 say any act, any any constitution or any act that the president get the prerogative for fire. So if you've been the fire, you say as directed by the president, where president they appoint people, not a president itself they appoint, right? We get the secretary to president when the ink can put out that letter and say, as directed by the president, this is constitutional. But here is a ministry keep on telling the people of this country, we have them on paper, we have them on video that say, the Univers no, the, 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 the tertiary commission act gives them the provision for dissolved. And uh, when then they appoint on the, the, the last letter where we, we, we get, where they appoint this last illegal chancellor, what did they say? They say the court act, section 85, but they not say the constitution. It's sad, it's disappointing, that we have people supposedly to be educated or who are educated are uh, deliberately presenting false misinformation, disinformation to the people of this country. It's a mockery. Thousands of people are waiting. The, 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 their future depends on this decision. 
and we have people who are toying with this decision. I mean, I just want to let it tell you clearly the constitutional bearing where given that mandate and why for this far too long they don't keep up. It's sad that we know they're not the studio, let like them be when I be invited and not the camp. But it's good that when I give this opportunity, we're able for challenge. But over the phone, we cannot be continuing the phone for be done in the studio. But we actually want to see which constitutional provision when are in bearing, where in the lay, you know, to the people of this country this morning, where not to the secretary of the secretary to president make that uh, pronouncement. Every other appointment. For the fact that I come out through the sector of, 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 of the to president, we say, you know, as advice or the president say, if, if, if the president not appoint this person. It's very clear. Nobody not going to contest that. It's not the constitution. The president get the power for hire and fire. They said to any act of parliament or the constitution. Uh, that's not... The chief executive campaign for human rights and development international way uh, they follow the program and get in position on the statement of uh, the director of higher education, Mr. Momo Weisi. Now the constitution of Salud they use for dissolve the for this for the dissolution of the university court and appointment of a special committee. You just don't listen to somebody we uh, advocate um, don't they advocate for this issue. See, uh, the constitution we will refer to not just not justiciable for do the action we will do. Thank you very much. I don't listen to Mr. Fatoma. Of course, it they make mention of Section 61 of the Constitution. One or ever make mention of Section 61. It, it, it not be clear so, on the so, section so, we oh, use. Well, at the end, it will actually make mention of Section 61. It, it, the reason why, well, we don't do my necessary say for come at this place here because yesterday, lots of misinformation. Mr. Fatoma misinformed the public. Like on which basis? Like on waiting? Like on waiting? It is informed. Basis for you know, get any basis because it talks say the minister rely on section eight, section eight five of the of the University Act for appoint the o, acting o, vice chancellor. Why did why you why if we on. if I if, if we have been they follow the program? Why would I not call that time immediately for no, well, for well, because him back be there at the studio at the moment. So I know they just call. I get for actually be a management decision for make and make meal. We play card. Can I ask you? We listen them, and it was a management decision that I have to call. So yes, the management decision. So, so now, minister. now if we talk, say um, um, we don't appoint minister, um, uh, acting vice chancellor, relying on section eight five. That's wrong. You see, when you do not understand the situation, come and ask. Mister Fatoma, not ever takes, um, you know, ever take time for kind of the ministry and ask. It just they listen to waiting people that don't tell them outside or the university don't tell them. Now if they come, come to the ministry and. Yeah, we own side of the story. You know, civil society activists. But yesterday, it was rather really unfortunate. Mr. Fatoma Sidonaya, and they use some unprintable words, you know, against the ministry. We will not be the even caution. So, so, so let we, we, we come to so the issue. Let we look, five, look onto the issue and not focus on individual. Section 85 actually, it is talk about the substantive holder of that position, of the vice chancellor and principal, which is why we say, okay, let the acting vice chancellor is appointed. You understand? Until we the, the the substantive order of that position is appointed rely on section eight subsection five of the university act even as the search committee don't wait them for you don't interview you don't get the people you they bring back those names to the minister and the minister and i they recommend that person to chancellor for appointment you understand so in the talk say which i don't talk the basis the tc man don't talk the lapses of the university will lead to the dissolution of the court and they don't prefer remedies we too for do you understand so they be the argue say you not get we not get any legal basis and I also I don't make mention of the of the constitution of the constitution of Sierra Leone Act number Act number five of um, uh, Act number six of 1991 I don't make um, <coughs> reference to so section 62 where talk say where any minister has been charged with the responsibility for any department of government shall exercise general direction and control over that department. Now, Minister of Agriculture does provide University general of Sierra Leone. No. The, the general now, Minister of... Now, now Minister of the general the, control is it to ask the university court for a point the acting well, vice well, chancellor just, and do the needful or the ministry name for you know go ahead and do appointments. If the minister don't see say things are going bad at that university day, 
Now, with responsibility as a minister for come in for, for actually uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, correct the situation. Correcting the situation would have been. Because the minister for the cabinet, not in the for act. Una role is it supervision of the universities or tertiary education system or una for take part in the running of the institution? We, we don't take part in the running of the institution. I made mention of the fact that if the university don't actually perform their duty, they play the role actually for appoint the university court, for appoint the pro vice chancellor. The ministry had no business appointing acting vice chancellor. I don't tell, I don't make this clear. Initially I, I make mention of this. Yeah, so I don't say because of this, because they don't perform their, their duty, their role, and we don't see say the student they got for it will affect the students them, it will affect the parents them. Now, so from what they don't do last year, some of them they we don't advertise but put scholarship, international scholarship. They for not can in some mark for can interview, but because you know that original, you know, can okay. So they disadvantage the student. So which which is the reason why the ministry got for can so in. this actual one, don't anything go bad that the ministry they go ask that the ministry they go ask. So it's this action one I don't take so go make them graduate? Well, yes, we are working towards that. Yesterday, when the acting vice chancellor went to assume office on Monday, a lot, a lot of progress has been made. In fact, they don't sign, but who results them with the they Would sign today. them? They were called the VCNP, now they give approval. So they don't sign them, and the registrar don't sign. Today, they, they publish, but who results them? By, by Friday, before Friday, a lot of, maybe 100% of them results them probably. And we are up and we are, we'll be settled for, for the graduation. You understand? I would, I mean, they talked to the registrar, the acting registrar yesterday. Even the, 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 the processes leading to the change of signatories, all of that is at, at an advanced stage. They don't actually do that. The change of signatories, you know, and that kind of thing. So, I mean, you, you know, go actually look for it until the, the, the substantive, the appointment of the substantive order therefore is a process. But according to the Never president did. for ASA yesterday, Never anything did. that we just explained, we are in. Um, you know, now they on progress for sign result by Friday, then we don't publish. These are all challenges right now with the university you know, able to do. So if you say challenges, then they for let on a process some of them results, then they now you say they don't sign and by Friday. And now, they, now they tell you, I mean, they talked to the acting registrar yesterday, as to what they happen. He tell me, say, a lot of the results, they don't, they don't sign, they don't right. sign, they go publish them today. Okay, well, you see, and when once results are published, then the university go ready. For, 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 for organizing graduation ceremony for students. All right, let me yes. we'll follow up on that particular issue the way, way, way you say. But again, the, the, the reason we make the ministry kind sign and appoint somebody now that now politics on the play with the university. No, well, that, that's, that's the opinion of that person. Day. But me, no, say, the not to politics. And the president, when I hear opinion, but me, no, say, not to politics. I cannot argue on opinion. I argue on fact. You understand? Okay. So if we don't actually talk, say, these people, I mean, we don't really supervise them. When you, when you ask, I ask um, the registrar of Eastern Technical University, do you have a pro vice chancellor? He said, yes, they have a pro vice chancellor. It may be university. And I asked EBK and it's by Proma University, the, the chancellor, the vice chancellor, do you have a pro vice chancellor? He said, yes, they have a pro vice chancellor. I asked uh, MMT meeting my guy, do you have a pro vice chancellor? He said, yes, they have a pro vice chancellor. So what's the wrong university of Swallow forget the pro vice chancellor? No, 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 Mr. Momo, if they, Mr. Momo, if they approve their result, they don't sign their Result there, so we are according to the university act, the university court name for approved results. Them without the university court, would I go for approved the results there? So we would not design. Fine, that's a very good question. The vice chancellor, we don't get the vice chancellor and principal. When I'm the chief academic and administrative head of the university, he's the operational man. Then they take the place of wait, the wait, university court. Is that the case? Before ever the university, before ever that result, then they come to court, they go for go through senate, senate go for look at them. Eh? They go for approval, they go for look at them, they present them, and what are the senators? Therefore, no say section 17, subsection 1 of the Universities Act, make provision for senators. What are the senators? Eh? You get you get I mean, I mean, you get the pro vice chancellor, you get a DVC, you get the direction of, of, of institute, you get the deans of faculty, you get the heads of department, you get professors, you get librarians. All professors of the university are automatically members of Senate. So if the, all of those ones don't they, they don't present the result them, they don't look at them, they don't consider them, they don't approve them. The vice chancellor and principal, when they are the chairman of Senate, this the so vice, basically, the chairman he, of Senate. So he basically they tell approval. Then he give approval. Then he can also take administrative decision for 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 approve the result. So he basically later, you basically later it can be ratified. Those results can be ratified by court. So basically you this how would they ratify where student and get the result then now? 
No, 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 no. I mean, now no, just a matter of formality. You don't ratify. You don't go to sell it. You don't go to sell it for. So they basically, they say the university. They, they, they would, would have approved budget now. Now the university has the as a president. They say then they get challenge them for approved budgets and all that things. Would that they do that now? You get, you get not to, you get the, you get this. I don't tell you say that change okay. of signatures and they, you get the acting finance director, you get the acting registrar, we gotta get the VCNP. So all of those ones, then they, they can take actions, they can approve budgets, and then, 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 then for the operationalization of the university. Okay. So, in the university, when you don't talk say the vice, the vice chancellor, when I did the operational man, they on seat. It can, it can ratify the result, it can approve the result, and they later ratify by the university court. So, the idea of telling students that, that they can't get degree, we know it. No lie. I mean, I'm sorry, that's not fact. Okay, not so, 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 continue. Not true. Continue for stay with me. We still get the TEC man at the studio, uh, Mr. Joseph Oss. But quick, we go online and join Dr. Abdullah Kebawa, uh, President Academic Staff Association. We insert the follow the program and say you want to make clarification quickly. Hello, good morning, and welcome to the program, Mr. Bawa. Dr. Bauer. Hello. Dr. Bauer, and welcome to the program. Good morning. Sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. Yes, yesterday we got you in the studio. You make your point, but today they follow the program and say you get some few clarifications. Them, of course, the production team team can deem say them for give you the space for respond to anything we um, perhaps go against the person or you want make your input into the program. What is your position so far? Well. I don't I don't listen the, the program. Now the now the consistent misrepresentation of the facts where uh, the ministry representative and uh, EJ Momo they, they misinform the public about now and for Claire. There is no provision for say University of Sierra Leone, now a department under Ministry of uh, Education that will establish that fact. Now, departments will they get policies for department, but will not they get an act for a department. So, university, not to a department under. So, that relevant sections where the codes that the constitution you know, make any sense, you know, relevant to this situation. Then, I want the editor say uh, they rely on section 85. I, I want that is in a lawyer. Section 85 clearly states say, if Vice Chancellor and principal not then in position for perform in duty. The pro vice chancellor then they step in. I don't know. I don't know which which school of thought talks the which school of thought talks the that provision now for appoint. That means I don't know which, which English way do then study way make that provision day because I don't ever see. I don't ever know say that the interpretation of that section down day. Then three, it is talks the then they get. Uh, uh, change of signature, then the vice chancellor and principal don't 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 not the nineties. Yes, um, Miss Doctor Bawa, quick one. Low we focus on the issue than individual, and uh, we they protect the we studio against them. As a caution, um, uh, Insef just now on the statement against uh, Fatoma. Like any other guest, we really protect them, and we no go allow anybody to use any language on you. Just make your point without attack on personality. No, no. The point here what they make is, you see, then the sign results, then the change signatures, then the uh, the 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 the, 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 the registrar and then the sign results. The university act clearly states that only courts now the approve results. Not a vice chancellor, no more decision and office they approve results and then go go uh, congregate people there. It inside the act. No make no, no make mockery of this document when at the state organ, when a parliament make them. Because now so thing they we not they in the favor, so I will say this thing is wrong. Let no 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 tread on the on the right path. The university clearly state on, on, on how results they, they go through court before then come into the congregation stage. And not only the chancellor then get the mandate and the vice chancellor and principal substantive then get the mandate for uh, for signing then check the data it's nothing like acting in the in the act so let them now not misinform the public it says that your h5 clearly states if the vice chancellor not the and the pro vice chancellor there is nothing like acting it's a use section 62 of the constitution section 62 of the constitution says 
uh, supervise and uh, control. Supervise and uh, control means an appointment they for do. What would be wrong if they before advice means you say that advice you roll for play, they for advice because we uh, are not get approved by chancellor, we are go appoint one. Okay, the chancellor day, they say they not get approved by chancellor. The chancellor say let the court appoint one. The court appoint one, they send out to the back. They say they not the agree on So we say they want let the let, let, let the let the court stand. Thank you very much for your contribution. This is the program, Dr. Abdullah K. Bawa, in our president for the Academic Staff Association. Uh, the program, now, Good Morning Salon, we can't wait from the Society for Radio Democracy 98.1 FM. We go, uh, before we go for one of our headlines to raise them, quick, I can't to the representative from the Tertiary Education Commission. We, them, they for advice on issues we get for do with uh, higher education at the country. You don't listen to the arguments from different angles and you don't observe keenly. Wasn't that taking all of this? Yes, um, you know, when um, situations like this, you know, come, people they come with two different mindsets and perception, right? Um, what you would establish first night today, we clear that this congregation, which dated for April, was already approved by the then courts. Hmm? It was not as a result of the dissolution make a day to April. I think that's very clear that the courts be make them very clear. So now, when they talk about a congregation with the April, we get a resolution, a committee where they work on some of them things here. Um, law will not begin prejudice some of the decisions that we get for come. There's a possibility, hmm? there's a possibility that a court, a new court will have been reconstituted before April. Hmm? There's a possibility that a new chancellor, based upon this act, act can possibly day, possibly day and get them things here ratified. Yeah. I just I just come in, I just I just preempt. So long no wait until the time for graduation come, you say okay, the bridges, then bridge that and no bridge that. So no begin justify that. And who are the who are the advice? Who right. are the advice? Exactly. Who are so the advice at all on education? Yes. Quickly like come. And we see the, the, the dissolution of the university courts and the setting up of a special committee for do the work of the university courts. Where according to this committee, waiting we don't gather so far, don't advise the Minister of Education on then your limits for SECA and then work at the university and for replace the university courts. Now you, you, you think say you think say perhaps you think say if then dissolve or the after the dissolution of the university court now for set up a special committee or for reconstitute the university courts. No but even before you get for reconst reconstitution of a court night process. I want to establish that very clearly. Reconstitution of a court night process. Because mind you um Recommendation therefore go to His Excellency for the Chancellor, the ex His Excellency like busy person, he gets so much time. So there is already a committee in place hmm? where they take the um, activities of the university until a new court is reconstituted. So you know, go just call like a can superimpose like a for city today, 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 a new court for come. And I, I think I've been a part of the inaugural meeting of the, of the committee, day, right? Um, TC was also part of it, right? So, um, some of the functions, the way people they make us to say nothing is happening, is, is not is, is not true, right? Because all of the DVCs are members of that committee. Hmm? All of the DVCs they continue for perform the administrative functions as well as the academic functions at the moment. Let's establish that fact very clearly, right? That the university not the only stands still. No, even as we talk so now, there are timetables, drive timetables already for exams. We already did. The DVCs then get exactly then get then get responsibility for this board certain funds for the respective campuses then for keep them going, right? The committee will not make suggestions in terms of finances until a new court is constituted. And I make a very clear now, so, right? What they talk about some right. of these things. This parliament will only talk about. The resolutions are very clear, Musa. Even yesterday, I went for um, the executive director. He misrepresents within parliament states. Parliament has six points resolution. I can read them very clearly if right. you not give me the opportunity. Okay. Would they come to right. you back? Would they no, come I mean, not just come on Mr. Policy Force? They're they not only person that like a blatant disregard. Oh, Parliament yeah. say Quickly. one, two, three, four. One, uphold the acting. Two, ensure say within six months, right, a, the court for the reconstitute and get a search committee. Right. And we are possible even get a pro vice chancellor in seat. So all of them things here, in, they are work in progress. You know, there's a lot of talk to say nothing or they in Apple. And that the last part of this one, Anybody will breach their resolution and I contempt. All right, so you see, so it's it very it explicitly clear, except now if you want for even begin discredit we are law making people. Eh? You understand? Eh? So continue. that's what I want for law, you understand. Continue for the with inside the program, Mr. Sawyer. Um we did take one of the headlines to read and we'll come we'll talk to 
um, uh, Emmanuel J. Momo Esquire. Um, now they take one of us to read them. Usai asked the Speaker and the Parliament, Honorable Abbas Sharina Bundu, say the review of the toll gates tariff will only happen if the tariff data are available for both government and China Railway Servant Group. The Director General and the National Roads Authority, the Sierra Leone Roads Authority Engineer Alfred Jalen Mahmoud, don't say the traffic data document we then get for CRSG get plenty irregularities. Then, well, for more on this, make we join Chairman Jalon. But eight years ago, the government of Salon be entered into agreement with the China Railway Servant Group CRSG for build, operate, and transfer the road from Wellington to Masheka, on about 62 kilometer road. And will cost about 154 million United States dollar. Also, the company will operate this road for about 27 years and later hand them over to government. Eight years ago, the company don't they collect different amounts of copper from Mutukadem where they use this road. As this now the way out of pull back them copper where they don't invest on this road according to the agreement. But this being them, information will meet salon people. Now that the company wants for add pan the copper way mutuka them, they pay for use this wood because the kind way out fuel price don't go up and self the kind way out dollar self don't go up. But this position by the company now I know plenty people not being gribbled when make parliament don't get one engagement to command them at the Ministry of Works and Public Assets (CRSG) civil society organization member them and other people for talk on the reason for the proposed increment. During this engagement, we in the talk, the Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Dr. Abbas Chengnobundu, say the reason for this engagement is because them as member of Parliament them want for hearing from all the player them before they take any decision as and go before for make this important point. We in believe say both the government and the company for take into serious consideration before they make any adjustment. The tariff can only be reviewed by the two parties to the agreement based on the traffic data. That traffic data is in possession of one of the parties who definitely want to know if the other party is now privy to that data and if so, to what extent. Because a review can only happen if that data is available and available to both parties. So it is very critical that whatever adjustment needs to be made to the tariff, it has to be based on data. Very scientific. According to the agreement, the criteria is very clear and simple. It has to be based on the data. The speaker end up say this is for only inform them on the traffic data, but for also inform the people of Salon on how far the government don't come for pay the loan. But this good traffic data, where the speaker they refer to, according to being good CRSG, they only provide all documents them concerning that traffic data day to the Sierra Leone Roads Authority. SLRA. Since the beginning, the construction and tolling of this road, we have been submitting the reports which contains the traffic data, the construction progress on a regular basis to the government authority, the Leon Roads Authority. It means that this traffic data is not only possessed by us, it has been made available to the government authority and also I have submitted the traffic data to the Ministry of Works. And this traffic data is not prepared only by us. It is prepared jointly by our operating team and the representative of SLRI. SLRI have two operating representatives on site, one from the technical department, the other from the financial department. As Bingo DC, they know the annual document them here in and out to the Sierra Leone Roots Authority, SLRI, this now with the Director General, now the Sierra Leone Roads Authority, Alfred Momodu say, some of them documents here so get issue. At the SLRA, of course, data has been coming in, but what we would like to say is that the data is not comprehensive enough because it comes in different forms and sometimes very irregularly. DG, data is provided by the CRSG. When you receive that data, what action do you normally take to verify that data? Or are you just a repository of data from, from the party? Or do you make an attempt to verify the authenticity of the data that you get? Attempts have been made uh, to work with them, but then 
it has not been very, very fruitful and consistent. As the discussion for proper disclosure of financial audited reports, vehicular traffic and other information on them continue for comments from the public, this now with the Minister of Works and Public Assets, Dr. Denis Sandy Pinse, not to all the inside this agreement for reach out to the public. Mr. Speaker, we have to be careful when signing the documents. Listen to what it says here. 3.5, the concessionee shall not be obliged to disclose any document in respect of which the concessionee can claim legal privilege against the concessionaire. So imagine it's here that we are not supposed, even as a government, to disclose any document. Mr. Speaker, all members, this is a highly classified document. I repeat, this is a highly classified document. And I'm so happy the right honorable speaker is saying that we need to tread cautiously on this matter. But with this statement from the minister, Senator all children at this document, the public for no but make plenty of people only wonder how public documents will get private sections um, in Siam. But even with this confidential part of the argument, the Minister of Works and Public Assets, Dr. Denis Sandy, say, a day will forget record for about one year traffic data. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to inform this horrible house and our people that because of my approach of humility and respect to the Chinese, they have made available to us the best traffic data. What they have done now, my people, ladies and gentlemen, the CRSG, they've presented a traffic volume of toll gate for the entire year 2023. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to announce here that for the total number of vehicles that crossed those three toll gates in 2023 was 9,804,000. 365. After then, different position they also from different people who will make statements inside this engagement. The speaker, Dr. Abbas Chang Nobundu, end up assure salon people say by the next sitting, this Thursday, it will give word to salon people. For the Society for Radio Democracy, me, Nachang Nojalo. The report. Good morning, Salon. We can say from 98.1 FM from that report. The, uh, the producers need a signal to we for our 10 minutes to the program. We can to the director of higher education. Uh, we from the minister of higher and technical education. When Mr. Momo is the program, Esquire, he don't make you a point, but somebody on a Facebook page they say now only the university courts get right for signed results. Them now, graduation, uh, at the at the end. Uh, Graduation at April this year, uh, how or how soon will we constitute the university courts for ensure they rectify their results as well? But before we respond to that, quick, we'll go for our cabots. I ask you a question just now, and that would be a random statement, a message of assurance, because uh, there's a belief that graduation is not going to take place, and the university already they postponed their programs, and now as uh, the matriculation postponed, and according to seeing uh, that the university is trained right now without nobody in order to approve the budget. Then. What's in the way forward? Now, now, at the time, say, first thing they now for approve the budget, you understand? The, we get the vice chancellor and principal, and then begin work, as I tell you, on Monday. But um, let me also make a point here that the people then, that the, uh, as I tell you initially, that Senate then are the highest ad, um, academic decision-making body in the university. Not to the and, courts again. No, no, I said academic. It's courts are the highest administrative decision-making body in the university. Why Senate are the highest academic decision-making body in the university? You understand? But you will understand it too. Right, and that Senate is headed by the Vice Chancellor and Principal. If, if, if the, the university courts now the highest decision making body at the university, it means that even administrative they under the mandate. That's not the case. Now, before ever result they go to, to court, Senate could not look at her, don't approve her. Now, look at what in the, the act they say now, section 18, subsection D. They say the Senate now they authorize the granting of degrees, diplomas, certificates, and other academic awards. You understand? I send it to responsibility that and the vice chancellor and principal now are the, the chairman okay. of that thing. So if you don't, they don't look at it, I don't wait till they call. I feel say, I don't really see any reason why people they talk say that. They, but let me come to this. The ASA, where, where, where they talk, ASA really get the mandate. The mandate now for actually cater for the welfare of their colleagues. Not for actually can begin to talk on administrative issues. Yesterday, it was a derogatory statement where, where Dr. Bahas and I, the top say, in fact, the vice chancellor is from his village, they go pick and that kind of, come on, University of, Jala University, Jala University. Right. He said somebody don't rise to the, to the level of professor 
Then they say from his village. That's prerogative. It's not done. Now, Mr. As Mr. I Mr. sit here, yes. Um, any plans stay for reverse this decision with the ministry we take for scatter the court for certain up back? Yeah, we get for actually we get for reconstitute the court. Well, it's a process that can you don't hear from the TC uh, person that says so. It's a process. We that, in fact that was what we told the committee that we, we not function actually enough for just come look at the M um, for, for for oversee the activity of the university and forget this the 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 the, the, the court reconstituted with immediate effect. And that was what the chairman, uh, the chair lady, told the, 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 the meeting at the inaugural, inaugural meeting. You understand? So that was misinterpreted yesterday also by Dr. Ba. I say, well, the chairman say, you know, able to work, don't let them go to. And I come on, the chair lady did not ever say so. Quick you one, understand? So in fact, Dr. Ba um, was cautioned yesterday by Asa that he is misrepresenting them, that he should not be even talking on behalf of Asa. He was he was cautioned, and I want to believe he's going to be impeached. No, 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 we, no that's we know this. We know the, we know, we know get the fact cautioned. to that. We know get the fact to that okay, statement anyway, today. Anyway, so yes, as I yes, caution Doctor Bawa, we mm -hmm. caution yourself not for use personal attack. Well, we it, address it, it, the issues. I can't tell Joseph us quickly. Uh, what is the way forward quickly? Um, of course, um, the way forward there is already a roadmap, right? As I say, um, I like for I like I like for delve into issues with specific specification. Um, we don't talk to the ministry, advise the ministry, um, the parliamentary oversight committee, the roadmap was very clear, right? Um, we did work with that. Now the committee already we, part of the agreement, strongly constituted. So there are plans on the way. There's an acting vice chancellor on the seats right now. So maybe even the, the three or four months period they talk about, all of these things go, maybe don't even set to before that. So it's just about giving time, let everything move on, and then we have like a clear sanity at the university going forward. Let's thank, thank you. you guys for joining us inside the program. Um, the voice we just listened to now, the executive secretary for um, TEC, Joseph Sawyer, and same way inside the program, we get the director of higher education, Emmanuel J. Momo Esquire. And so they had a look at um, issues that we get for do with um, the university. Um, well, I have good all the portions of the program. Good morning, Salon. We come to you live from Radio Democracy 98.1 FM. Plenty thank you to, you know, Fabian Mangeman, so we put the program together. Let's thank you to you, um, Abdul Gilen, DJ Kaman, Fatma Tasamura, and um, Adeyemi Jackson. Make on a live on Facebook. So till we meet for another edition, my name is Kamara. Bye bye. And Musa